Alright, that's the time. Thank you, Cursor. Hello, and welcome to The Letter. Uh, this is part two. <coughs> if you didn't catch the first part, um, it's loaded up on YouTube. Um, so, last time, we... Lord, a lot happened. Uh, we uh, went into a big spooky house, found a weird spooky letter, and uh, with help me, help me, help me written on it, and like, show this to five people and something, something, something. And we're just going around flashing it to everybody. Um, so I'm going to get started here, because uh, I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, we were careless about something. Oh, man. Um, I can't say I recall. Okay, backlog. Um, okay. Uh, even as, uh, whatever, um, hmm. Right, um. So we, Isabella, at the moment, um, fell and hit our head uh, earlier today and we we're going to see a movie which I think is Zach this guy here his movie um, and they were like oh no Isabella should go home and like uh, rest up and um, I'm like hell no we should stay here and watch the movie so let's go Oh, that's right. Um, that's right. I, I save right here. Um, oh, let's save for the movie. Any other day, I'd excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zach. Something he worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. Yeah, because he's like the director or something. And this is like a local movie festival. I might be having a bad day, but being with a few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of my day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. With my concussion. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? That, that is actually a good question. I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. Ah, I blinked. Ah, I blinked. And maybe if I stay, let our heads cool down first before telling them what happened, they'll listen to me. There's nothing you can't solve with a calm head. I, you showed them the letter, man. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <clears throat> this time, I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. You go, girl. Stupid Ash. Being vertically challenged has its perks, too. Oh, that's right. She's a short girl. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby! I'm not one! Aw, oh, don't cry. He's got Stop you there. It. Okay, scaredy cat then. Got Thank him! You. <laughs> you that, I swear I'll... Let's just go. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Also, how's, how's the, the volume for everything? Ash and I exchange looks at that the same question likely swimming in our minds. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? Cool. Glad. I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. Sick. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? Snacks! I made it, remember? Ah, good point. One friendly tap on my shoulder, and he's gone. Never to be seen again. A few moviegoers are still milling about. Some are still waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise, most of the crowd are already inside. 
There's nothing much for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from Ash. Uh, comes from me when Ash gestures the two of us to head inside. And then? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. To be fair, Zack was the was the one who brought it up again. You're talking through the movie, guys. In his own movie's premiere. I know that's what I'm saying. Now the film just serving as background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones. Careful not to disturb anyone else inside the small hall. We're talking about ghosts and de Well, except for Ash. Because he's a rude. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'd all get kicked out for sure. To get kicked out of your own movie premiere, man. That's wild. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out of here way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referred to. If I didn't know any better, I'd think we did something that offended her. D did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but Jesus, he should learn to listen. Plus, he didn't say he doesn't believe in these things. Why is he in the... Uh, plus, he didn't... What? I heard what you said, <laughs> but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. Plus, did, didn't he say he doesn't believe in these things? Got it. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ah, uh, fair. A problem Good. You're hosting an open house. Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. They might. You there don't know. There are no ghosts, Zach. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking, maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? Uh, sounds reasonable. Oh, the house did change hands over the years, from one distant relative of the Ermagerds to the, to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though, and it remained that way up until its current owners decided to sell it. Why didn't I think of that? That's a good question. Why didn't you? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering his suggestion, are you? Do you have a better idea? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. Does you Zach know an exorcist? Find you a psychologist instead. Rad. There are very few times in my life when I wish my glowers can kill. This is one of those times. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. Nothing is no, an appropriate wait, thing to say right now. You're in a movie theater. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course. If you Ashton, if you don't stop. Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Becca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Huh? What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? Sorry. Scaredy cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one. But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. I it sounds it sounds sensible to me, out, man. Teach you a couple things, and probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be. Bad. I know, right? Ash might be right too. However, what Zach suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Yeah, she is Catholic, like Filipino Catholic. Granted, they don't believe me. The only thing giving me these suggestions put my mind at ease. But it's better than being ignored or laughed at. You know, like, people talking in, like, our local theater are, like, nuts. Like, it's insanely bad. But, jeez, guys. Come on. Uh, calm down. Also, I... like What is new a relationship here? Oh, no, I've upset Becca. Okay. Also, who's Hannah? I haven't met you yet. I have no idea who you are. You've seen you, and that's me. 
Was Hannah? Uh, I, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, it's better than being ignored and laughed at. Sure, 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 sure. I can take comfort in knowing that they they are willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't uh -oh. know. I... Oh, dang. Uh-oh. Uh, so, part of me loves the idea of an exorcism. Um... And like, but I don't know what an anthropologist is going to do for us in the ghost times, right? Like, I mean, it just doesn't sound like anthropology is the key here. Yeah, I, I, I say we go exorcism. Let, let's let's get let's let's get some exercise, dudes. Actually. I'm gonna save. Nice. And let's go get some ex exercise. But maybe we could go with Zach's idea. Yeah, fuck you, Ashton. I'm not so sure about that. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least we did something. That yeah, that's the thing. Wrong. If it doesn't work, you could then I'll call the other guy, guy, right? Thanks, Zach. I knew I could count on you. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it, yet you're not even paying attention yourselves. Thank, thank you, girl. <laughs> Saying with everything on our mind. Broach the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. Relationship. Oh, hell yeah, Zach's our boy. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. I throw her an apologetic look, even if Ash is the only one she should be reprimanding. But her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something's nagging at her. We really need to talk, girl. We all fall into a comfortable silence. The kind you can only share with people you're most at ease with. And also in a movie theater with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. I don't know, you were just talking about it, right? Uh, timeline stuff, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, because there's... History. Oh yeah, this is. I need her to take her flu medicine. Not gonna say I remember that. Um, that's us finding the letter. Bump in our head. That's the open house. It's going to the movie. How cute. <clears throat> Night has fallen by the time we exit the movie house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bus busting full of people. Those about to head home, those set to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking in this sea of unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as nondescript as Luxburn. I was afraid, too, at one point, back when I was new and had just set foot in this place. Now, with familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. The Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Becca and I crossed to the other side of the street. Oh, we're going to get some girl talk! The former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the day ends. And Ash? Eh, who knows. Fuck him. <laughs> Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zack a lot, much to the latter's frustration. 
No idea what a ladder has to do with this girl. But he's a busy guy too, in, spart in spite of the laid back in spite of the laid back air he gives off. No problem, Zach. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Um huh? spooky. Yep, that's good. A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning, my chest tightening, breathing becoming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth, the edges of my vision blurs. Oh god, it's the concussion again. Ugh. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to me. Pleading even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hands over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering, calling out. No, not me. Somebody. Isabella? Earth to Isabella. At her voice, the whole world suddenly snaps into place. The murmur is gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Oh, don't worry about it. I just had a panic attack. MBD. Weren't you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... Yeah. Just... Okay. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. Same. I follow her without complaint, but not before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street. Where the voice came from, where another set of eyes might be staring at me. Nothing. Nothing at all. There are only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca parked her car. <laughs> if I'm expecting to see something, or someone there, I try not to let it show. Try not to let it think of the tiny pinpricks of fear crawling at the crawling at the pit of my stomach. Time. Yeah, see ya. Another glance and a final wave. We go off on our own ways. You can go your own way. I don't know what I saw. I don't know what I heard. I don't want to know. And if this is what would help me sleep tonight, what would give me back that normalcy in my life, then so be it. October 22nd, Saturday. The darkness closes around me, grasping, pulling, engulfing me. Just like my love for Cassandra Tala. Hello. <laughs> the ground caves in without warning. I'm falling. She's off. This, this game has, like, primed me. Like, I was just kind of looking down here, because this is where the, like, words are. And just that red, I was like, oh god, that bed is covered in blood. Oh wait, no, it's okay. Ugh. <laughs> oh, that was spooky for just a second. Ugh, okay. Uh, well, I'm here, obviously. Um... Seems like... I'm not sure. Oh, hello! Yeah, comment section sound off. Let's... or uh, chat. Let's go. Uh, I feel that. Uh, <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Right. Let's get going. Day two. For an instant, it doesn't immediately register where I am. But same. Both my back and my shoulders ache after I've fallen asleep all hunched up the night before. Also, uh, can we talk about her stuffed animal situation? Uh, like this sheep? I would die for this sheep? And this cat bat. Oh my god, this cat bat. 
I love this cat bat. The ram is so cute. Also, maybe we should have listened to Isabel a little bit more uh, when she freaked out about the noodle cup situation. Uh, it's pretty rough. Uh, yeah, rip her blood pressure. For sure. <laughs> Drenched in sweat. The nest of pillows. The nest of two pillows. I keep often... Uh, I often keep around me feels more suffocating than comforting. I let my eyes adjust to the bright morning light streaming through my window and allow my breathing to slow before untangling myself from the pile. I haven't had a single dream since coming to Luxburn, or at least none that I can recall having. That's a shame, because they used to be so vivid. Not the crazy vivid, but more the pleasant kind I tell my siblings about. Maybe it's just the stress of living alone. The knowledge that I'll always wake up in an empty apartment with no one to tell stories to. Hmm. What time is it? Time for you to get a watch. Habit forces me to look over at the clock, even with the soreness weighing heavily on my shoulders and the compulsion to never leave my bed for the day. Da, da, da. In a heartbeat, I'm up. It's 5 a.m., girl. Of all the times to oversleep. Towel, towel, where's my towel? Girl, it's, it's literally 5 a.m. Like, where do you gotta be this early? Like... Jesus. Admittedly, it's a weekend as an unspoken rule. She's up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, where you gotta be? Also, yes, uh, whatever she's looking for is statistically under a noodle cup. Admittedly, it's a weekend and as an unspoken rule, that entitles me to extra hours of sleep. Ah. <sighs> But if Rose didn't kill me yesterday, she sure as hell will now. And right after what happened? Oh lord, one box of donuts as a peace offering won't be enough the second time around. Grab my towel, I'm already a few short steps away from the bathroom when a muffled ringing breaks out from my bag. There's a moment of indecision at first. My mind conflicted whether I should just ignore or answer it. But what if it's Rose? Girl, at this point, it's gone to voicemail. Or worse, our boss. Ah, heck. In the end, the rational part of my brain wins out. The letter from yesterday peeks out when I pull the device out. Just the sight of it is enough to put me in a foul mood, and it takes every force of will for me to ignore it in favor of answering the call. She feels a chicken. Uh, the ID reads Mama. It's around 4.45 in the That's Philippines right now. An unusual time for them to call. Five in the afternoon? Usually it's around noon time here, and I'm the one calling, not the other way around. Um... A cup of noodles is friend. Uh, use that money on an amateur call. Regardless, in the most cheerful tone I can gather. Cup of noodles is best friend. Hello? Hello? Grace? How are you? You have a Mama, suspiciously non-Filipino accent. Guys over there? We're good, we're good. EJ won a storytelling contest at school the other week. Like, Brought suspiciously? I thought you should know. There's a tired lilt in her voice as she speaks. It's been there since Papa had to leave his job. I wish there was something I could do for her. But for miles away like this, the least I'm able to do is not to make her worry. If only my older brother would actually lend her a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Odds are Kuya Jordan's already out drinking right now. 
Again. I can't count on my older sister either, knowing she has a family of her own, and, well... She hasn't been the same since the accident. Uh, I mean, at Anne's... Ata Anne's financial situation isn't exactly great right now. Having ran herself knee deep in That's debt. Great. Tell him congratulations from me. And let him know I'm gonna send him a little something extra this Christmas. <laughs> like, I love how this ticks in real time, though. So, like, all of that time, and even this where I'm paused, it's just she's like thinking out loud, like talking to herself, like, oh man. You know, like, uh, my aunt's situation is like this and this, and, you know, oh, man, my uncle this is doing this. And, like, your mom's just waiting patiently, like, look, this is costing me, like, like, 15 cents a minute, man. Like, could you pick up the pace a little bit? <laughs> just, I love it. How about Nico? Karen? Michael? I hope they're okay? They're doing well. They wanted to talk to you, but they're all busy with school. Oh, no, that's fine. I don't want to bother them. Just tell them to keep doing their best for me. I'll just call back when I know they're not busy. And Papa? How's Papa doing? It's a subject I'm a bit hesitant to broach. From the way my mama's voice hitches, she doesn't want to bring it up either. Papa. Grace, Papa's... He's having a little difficulty right now. Weak appetite, he's having trouble swallowing, and lost a few pounds... But the doctor said we should keep encouraging him. It just means his body's accepting his new treatment well. The money you sent last time helped a lot to pay for it, by the way. Oh. I see. Th that's good. I won't deny that life has gotten tougher for our family. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. But ever since, he was diagnosed with a sickness five years ago. He'd been unable to provide for us. Now, the burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's bills all rest on my shoulders. <clears throat> Although Mama makes a little accepting sewing, uh, makes a little accepting sewing and laundry jobs for in our neighborhood, it's scarcely enough to cover the costs of day-to-day -day living, let alone the bloating something or other. Uh, we can't even accept help for our own government because the health insurance there barely covers anything. I'm sure he'll get better soon. Ah, goodness Is gracious! Is he well enough to talk? Do you think I'll be able to speak to him, Ma? Silence. I start to think that the call got cut until. Listen, Grace. Maybe it's better if we transfer Papa to a different hospital, somewhere cheaper. What? Why? Did something happen? Is it the deposit issue again? Give me the hospital's number. I'll talk to them. No, it's nothing bad. The service here is good. Too good. Even the doctors. But I'm worried you're working yourself to the ground because of it. That's fine. Well, we've been through this before. Like, we're, we've are we only been cursed by a ghost. Like, but once. Found a dead body in a sofa one time. That matter. I can handle myself. Everything's going well here. In fact... In fact, we're about to close a large sale. Hopefully. If not, then I'll find another way. She doesn't need to know that. Sorry, Mama. You taught me not to lie. Yet look at what I'm doing. I'll have money to send over soon to cover the rest of Papa's treatment. And there's more than enough for Karen, Nico, Michael, and EJ's school tuition, too. How much commission you think Thank you're going to so get, much, girl? Dear. I appreciate it. We all do. But I... I just wish you'd come home to us soon. Ah. Uh, I'm not going to try? <laughs> when are you coming home? EJ, the youngest, used to be the only person asking me that. How do you respond to a question you don't have a definite answer to? You say, I don't know. That is how you respond. Five years later, and I still can't give them a straight answer. I smile, though Mama can't see it. I fight to keep my lips from quivering, my voice from shaking. She's got enough on her plate as it is. No need to weigh her down with unnecessary concerns. Promise me you'll be there to welcome me when I do. Of course. I'm sorry, Grace. 
I need to take this for a while. There's a small commotion on the other end. The sounds of gates opening. The voice of a child, EJ, talking excitedly about his day at school, the tapping of feet on floorboards as he runs. Cute. It's been years since I went home, but I still can picture the whole scene in my mind. How tall is he now? Are the neighbor kid, neighborhood kids bullying him now that I'm not around? Did Mama rearrange the furniture in the living room again? What are they having for dinner today? This is sad. I, I wanted spooky, not sad. I miss them. I miss them so much. It's okay, Ma. I need to go, too. I've got work today. I'll call again soon, alright? On a Saturday? Oh, no. Apparently we do. Take care of yourself, dear. I love you. I love you. Bye. It ends... It ends with a soft... Wow, jeez, cannot talk. It ends with a soft click, leaving half-truths and empty promises hanging in the air. <sighs> Closing my eyes for a moment, I see a deep breath. I take a deep breath and shake away the thoughts beginning to swim inside my head. Pointless to mull over these things right now. Okay, Isabella. Time to get that mansion sold. Ah, hell yes. Unfortunately, before I can take a single step away from the phone, it rings again. No doubt Mama forgot to say something. Mama? Did you forget anything? Excuse you. I'm too young to be your mom. Are you still sleeping? Hold on, never mind that. Get yourself in the office. Hurry! Office? Once again, 5 a.m. Oh no. Is it Sir John? Did he hear about yesterday? Am I in trouble? Oh god, oh god, oh god. I'm gonna get yelled at, aren't I? What do I do? Um, I'll buy you an extra box of donuts if... No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Will you calm down? Get yourself here, all right? I'll tell you everything then. There's a telltale den of several feet shuffling against a wooden floor and an indistinct yelling in the background before Rose cuts the connection. Like, it's 5 a.m. Well, okay. According to that clock, it's 5 a fucking m on a Saturday. It's enough reason for me to hastily discard my phone and finish the shower in record time. I make it to our office within 20 minutes of leaving the apartment, completely disheveled and out of breath. A feat if I take it into account my usual travel time. Routine clamor, common to Briar Realty Company's Lexburn office, greets me as soon as my foot crosses the threshold. Papers rustling, telephones ringing with, at sporadic intervals, agents talking at varying volumes, staff moving about, and... Where the hell is C? Where are my employees? What the actual fuck, guys? Of all the times to disappear without notice. Okay, I know nothing about this guy. <laughs> I like him. I like him already. He might be a scumbag. He might be the actual antagonist of this game. I like this guy already. <laughs> My boss's words turn muffled as someone else closes the door to his office, likely the work of our HR manager. Throughout the past weeks, he's been in a bad mood over a few employees who have failed to report to work. They are probably dead and stuffed in a sofa. We're still, We're still trying to get a hold of them, but to no avail. The result is, half of their workload has been shifted to all available staff, so as not to lose clients. It is awful suspicious. Uh, not to mind the extra work. If anything, it means I'll have some more to send to my family back home. Although the rumors of a branch closure circulating because of this is indeed a bit worrisome. Much like the, shall we say, sus disappearances. My back barely touches the top of my, of my table when Rose pulls me aside. Here, I need you to help me with these papers. If you could also get these signed and photocopied before lunch today, that would be great. 
One after another, she thrusts a bunch of paperwork in my hands without explanation. A page flutters away from the top of the pile. I lean down to pick it up, my eyes scanning the top of the page as I straighten. A purchase and sale agreement? Rose simply gestures her thumb in the direction of our visitor lounge when I tilt my head in question. There, seated on the sofa, com looking completely out of place in the humbly decorated room, is the same couple from the day before. The rights. Oh ho, something bubbles up in my throat. Their presence in the office can only mean one thing. They're buying it? We got a deal? Hell yeah! She swats at my hand, tugging her sleeve, although her eyes are alight with something akin to joy. She wants the sale to happen as much as I do, and now that it's here. The deal needs to be closed yet. Documents need to be signed, but the elation is there. Along with a foreboden, foreboding feeling I can't quite pinpoint. Along with a verboten feeling. I had to do a little damage control, but they're already interested in acquiring the property, even before they attended the open house. I mean, isn't it obvious? They already hired an interior designer. That's a good point. I've never seen a buyer as aggressive as Madame Wright. <laughs> she didn't even try to negotiate a lower rate. One at a time, Rose. I can't that's fair. Like, saying at once. buying a house with an active demon in it. Yeah, that's, uh... percent higher than the listing price. Jesus. As long as we get the paperwork done as soon as possible. I think if we allow it, they'll be paying up front, too. Even with that urban legend? Okay, that's hella suspicious. <laughs> like, um, what? <laughs> Paying 15% more on a multi-million dollar mansion, up front, presumably in cash, for a giant haunted mansion. That's weird. <laughs> Eat the rich indeed. But either way, that's just weird. Like, that would be weird if it were like you were buying a trailer, right? Like, I mean... Oh, yes. Um, If we can get all this paperwork done quickly, I'd pay easily 20% more for this new boat or whatever. Like, that's... You squint your eyes and look at them kind of sideways. Like, that's weird, man. Especially if it were uh, haunted we're boat. So sure we lost the sale after yesterday. Don't look so surprised. We still have to conduct some last few checks before we completely hand it over. I have to, to keep them. my eyes on them. I'll happily do the paperwork duty, Rose. I'll even go to the land registry myself and make sure the property changes hands with every single legal blessing. Don't they have better things to spend money on? I'd haggle it down to the lowest possible price, even if, if I were in their place, especially with the stories attached to it. Uh, fair, yeah. Yeah, that is that is absolutely fair. Not that my opinion matters. We're just their agents going to receive a hefty commission, after all. Nothing more. Rose gives me a pat on the shoulder, signaling that she's heading back to him. And an unspoken instruction for me to follow her after I'm done. Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. It doesn't take me long to finish what work she left me. You know, their marriage is kind of in shambles, and they just need some a band-aid really quick, and they apparently don't want to have babies. In fact, having our boss sign the agreement is the easiest part, since it puts him in a much better mood. Ma'am Hannah calls me over at the moment, over the moment she notices my presence at the lounge door. Her lips twisted in a frown. She doesn't seem particularly happy to see me, and I'm not surprised. Who wouldn't be? I almost created a scene. Mr. Wright, however. Oh, Why, Mr. Wright. Really. I trust you're feeling well now. It's Isabella, sir. Not Lily. I appreciate your concern. I'm feeling better now. Oh, good. I really don't understand why they can't get my name right. It's a fairly common name. It shouldn't be too hard to remember. It's because they're rich and you're brown, sweetheart. Regardless, I hand them their copy of the agreement. I believe I can take that. Thank you very much. 
With how elegantly she plucks the papers out of my hands, it's easy to th it's easiest to think that there isn't any trace of irritation in her. But there, but it is there, radiating in her stance, in the way she's standing at a fair distance from her husband, and how the two look to be ignoring each other. Seeing this scene, it soon becomes clear to me that I'm not the one who's put her in a bad mood. Did they f did they fight? Hmm, most probably. I've seen it happen dozens of times with my previous clients. It's a shame, especially with their new mansion. I never did like it when my own mama and papa fought. I hope they'll make up soon, and one of them won't go mysteri dis disappear under mysterious circumstances. Apparently satisfied with what she's seen, Ma'am had uh, clasped her hands together before extending it to us for a shake. Rose and I both... Release the breath we've been holding. Both of us more than happy to return the gesture. That settles it then. Uh, are you really sure about this property, ma'am? We could easily find you a bigger one among our current listings. Yeah, get, get paid. Modern touch. Something not haunted, perhaps. Rose shoots me a warning glance that clearly says, "Don't make a scene. We're almost there." So why wouldn't I be? The house is absolutely perfect, isn't it, darling? A helipad would still be a nice addition. <laughs> yes, well, we'll get there eventually, love. As I was saying, if your partner had the documents yesterday... God, I forgot just how much of a douche he was. Shame she didn't have it. Well, well, there's still a few necessary documents we need you to sign after, but we'll let you know once we have those finalized. We'll be handling the process for the rest, so don't worry about it, ma'am. Within a week, I hope. We still have a housewarming party to plan, after all. You know how much thought to be put into those things. There are servants for that, darling. God, I forgot how much of a turbo douche he was. <laughs> like, wow. No more than a week, ma'am. Barring unexpected delay, of course. Like from demons or whatnot. It to us. Excellent. Well then, I'll leave you two to it. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and before we forget... She discreetly folds something into both of our hands and winks, a finger raised to her lips, demanding our silence. It's drugs! What happened the day before was quite... The demons can help plan. But you did get us what we wanted in the end. That, at the very least... Well, that is not what she was wearing. This is... Ma'am... Oh, I that is just... This. Cash Don't money. You worry, darling. It's a small thing coming from also, us. Also, uh, this might this joke might fall on deaf ears, uh, but at least uh, she looks like uh, she is about to go straight sage mode. Uh, let me tell you. Um, Consider this your bonus for a job well done. She smiles sweetly like this is simply the most normal thing to do in the world. Working on my Bill Shatner. Oh, I forget. My lovely interior designer would appreciate it if you hand her a copy of the floor plans as soon as possible. She's dying to work on the house. I'd so watch your wording. Yes. Here's her contact. C certainly, ma'am. We'll have it processed as soon as possible. I knew I could count on you, lovelies. I hope to see you too soon so we can get this closed. Man, the more they talk, the sketchier they sound. Just like that, transaction over and done with. My mind is still reeling after they've left. Other agents would kill to have clients like them. A part of me feels lucky about the fact. No lengthy negotiations, no sudden change of minds, just talk, signatures, a few handshakes here and there, and we're done. He has a very punchable face. A second ago, we sold a haunted property to two seemingly innocent clients. Sure, the commission's big. Big enough to continue funding Papa's treatment and hospitalization. Big enough to pay for all four of my younger brother, younger siblings' schooling. Heck, it'll keep me away from the instant noodle diet for months. I don't have to go back to the mansion as well once the deal has been closed, much to my sanity's relief. But knowing that something's in there, that we gave the good old gave it to a good old couple despite that. 
Oh, Isabella, the things you have to do to sell a house and get money. Papa won't be happy with you. Like, I kind of want this couple to just, like, be secret badass ghost hunters. Like, they're just straight-up ghostbusters. And they're just like, oh, yes, we know the property is haunted. <laughs> we plan to fix that. I think that'd be just great. Also, we got a new journal entry. Aw, it's so cute. Look, that's the family. That's so cute. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Papa won't be happy with you uh, sending a bunch of uh, innocents into a ghost house. At least I have good news to tell them next time I call home. Here's a sweet little picture. I like that touch. Little lie I told Mama this morning isn't a lie anymore. Well, the something. So how does it feel? How does what feel? Your first big multi-million pound sale, silly. I know you've been with us for years, but this has got to be memorable for you. Memorable is an understatement, Rose. Come on, show some enthusiasm. They gave us a bonus, too. Aside from the commission and the other bonus boss promised. Hell yes. Drugs! At home, probably? <laughs> All of it? Not everything, of course. Most of it. I'll leave some for my living expenses. Listen here, Isabella. I'll teach you something I should have told you before we ended your training. She slings an arm over my shoulders and leans in closer to my ear, as though she's about to share a big secret. It's okay to celebrate from time to time. I don't get it. It's simple. Go out, do something for yourself. Throw a party and treat your friends to free food. Didn't you say the last one's some sort of tradition back at home for you? Hello, this is practically a done deal. Uh, isn't throwing a party a bit excessive? Your call. I won't say no to an invitation, by the way, in case you really are planning to throw one. A few drinks would be nice, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> like... I don't think my apartment's big enough for that. <laughs> like, what a dick move. Like, hey, you know what you should do? You should throw a party to celebrate. Uh, also, you should invite me, and you should also buy me booze. Uh... <laughs> Like, what a dick move, man. <laughs> that's, that's rude. You could always move? Bloody hell, you're working in real estate. I think I'll pass. That's too much of an unnecessary expense for me. But I did promise Becca free lunch in case the sale goes well. Aww. You go do that. Hold on a sec. She quickly removes herself from me to answer the phone on her desk. Her tone shifts from playful to professional in the span of a few seconds. Today? Not a problem, ma'am. I could bring you a copy of the contract if... Must be another client. Nothing surprising here. She's one of BRC's top agents, no matter how modest she appears. A saleswoman, through and through. I, on the other hand, have a very little knack for it. Of course, I learned eventually. I had to. But someone else will, without a doubt, do a better job. Girl! Now stand up for yourself. Once, though, in a drunken stupor, Rose told me a story of what could have been... Years ago, wide-eyed, young, and brimming with yet-to-be-fulfilled dreams and ambitions, she was a term or two away from a nursing degree. Out of courtesy, I never pressed her on the matter further. But perhaps it is where the sense of fondness started. Small connection due to one similar experience in our prospective lives. Of goals we both let pass us by because of the circumstances we're in. I'd be happy to discuss this over tea, ma'am. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. New client? 
reassigned. Have you heard from Mark and all? Not since the first visit to the mansion. Why? No news from the HR yet? None at all. Boss thinks he ran away. I doubt it, though. He's too much of a wimp for that. There must be another reason. He was sacrificed yes. to the mansion. Anyway, I've got to meet this one. I'll see you later. She throws a wave over her shoulder as she rushes out of the office. The lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of fellow agents. Also heading out for a much-needed break. Ordinarily, there's no need for me to go out. But oversleeping didn't allow me the luxury of packing my own lunch today. If one considers taking an instant noodle cup from my pantry, packing your lunch. Also, I feel that. Time to make good on the promise I made to Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zack and Ash, too. In the end, only Becca and Zack could come. Ash, on the other hand, couldn't be reached. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. Ta-da! He's at it again, right here today, gone the next. Oh well, his loss. Bitch. We have agreed to meet at a nearby cafe. The same one I frequent with Becca because it's cheap and they give away free bread around closing. They've all been eaten by the house. Oh, I love this. Hold, hold on, hold on. I, like, I love this, like... So something I really like about this game, like, I've played a handful of, like, visual novels in my time. But, like, I really like this, um... This game's, like, oh, background elements that are moving. Like, these ceiling fans and then the thing here. Like, I've seen that before, but, like, it, it's it's a really nice touch. Like, I really like it. Also, I just, like, really love this whole aesthetic. Um, also, what's up with this cat-mouse thing in the back with the cross on its forehead? That's kind of weird. Um... Uh, <laughs> ah, excuse me. Quaint, a little old-fashioned, though, look, uh, though looks a wee bit out of place amidst the city's tall buildings, but we love it all just the same. Much like its facade, the interior carries an antiquated charm to it. Though it is just a facade. Vintage art pieces in a row of shelves boasting an extensive collection of books cover the walls. It would have been nice to hang out here for hours on end, but even on the weekend, the place is still packed with people. All two of them. <laughs> Thankfully, Becca and Zack have already found seats and are engaged in some casual chatter when I arrive. It's strange seeing the two of them without Ash accompanying the other. They've never even been they've never been particularly close. I know, I do too. They look like they'd have like really tasty like breads or something. Like sweet breads. Sure, they talk when they meet, laugh at the same things when there's something funny, but in the distance, they're kind of born purely out of differing interests. Oh, I it it reminds me a lot of Miss Kristen's, right? Like I mean, clearly like the interior is not the same, but like it has like the same vibe. Like, it, it does have like the small town like cafe vibe. And, like, I love it a lot. <laughs> like, I couldn't put my finger on why. But, like, it definitely has that small town coffee shop, um, local vibe to it. Like, the, the, the people that made this game, or at least the artist that drew this, has to go to a place like that, or like this, regularly. Because, like, they captured the vibe, like, perfectly. Ugh, maybe Zack's afraid of Becca. It's not impossible, and I wouldn't blame him if he is. He might be the tallest in our group, but everyone knows that means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I'm a little scared of her. Zack! Becca! Well, you seem to be in a better mood today. What happened? I know that smile, Belle. 
come on. Still, D don't rush me. Let's order food first, okay? Like, okay, so this game's weird. Like, just random story updates, like, a lot of the time. It's like, I guess... I guess there was, like, something I could have, like, a decision or an interaction that could have gone the other way. And, like, that's why it's like, oh, yes, the story's updating here. So, like, maybe if, like, back at the very beginning, like, if we would have, like, uh, told um, a girl pants off... Um, like, it would have been like, oh, you actually get this dialogue option. It's weird. There's, there's, a, there's a lot to this game, man. Let's order some food, man. Yeah, sounds great. Some, let's get some snacks. Waitress comes by to take our order. On a normal day, me and Becca would order a hearty serving of their special vegetarian stovies. Zach takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. Like, I'm not sure... The, uh, the script writer and the, um, the, the background artist had the same thing in mind when they said cafe. Uh, cause like, this is very clearly, you know, small coffee shop kind of thing. Right. But like, they're like, oh, hell yeah. Let's get some meat and potatoes and stuff like that. That seems weird, right? Like... So, I mean, this has, like, desserts and cake and coffee, and it doesn't seem to have much else. I mean, like, I guess Miss Kristen's had soup, but, like... Soup, salad, and sandwiches, but I wouldn't expect anything heavier than that, right? It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Turn down for what? <laughs> Today's special for the three of us. And Ash, but he's uh, AFK. Even the person jotting down her order looks surprised at today's meal choice. She writes it nevertheless and leaves without comment. Becca furrows her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose what's likely a string of reprimands. Don't worry, it's my treat. The glare she sends my way reminds me of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my younger brother 18 years ago. Ah, memories. Naturally, I never did it again after she made me apologize the next day. It, it wasn't the glare, it was the having to apologize to him that did it. But Becca is far from being my mom. A small sheepish grin is enough to turn that frown into a defeated sigh. Food arrives in the middle of a funny story from Zack, putting the rest of the conversation on hold as we each are served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Okay, um... I know you literally just said it's not anything fancy. Uh... Well, that was a fucking lie. Um... <laughs> Pan-roasted sea bass with citrus-dressed citrus asparagus and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side, or at least that's what the daily special board says. You know, nothing fancy. I mean, that does look delicious, though, right? Like, oh, I would eat that in a heartbeat. Man, that looks good. <laughs> I never did pay any attention to whether I come to whenever I come here, since the price of whatever is written way above what I'm willing to spend on food in a single day. Uh, right? I I absolutely want to see what she thinks a fancy meal is then, because she's like const like she's just like oh yeah no I never pay attention to how much it costs because it's way above what I'm willing to spend on food in a single day, and it's like. What would constitute fancy, then? Like, if this is more than your entire day's allowance for food, what would constitute a fancy dish, then? Oh, good. I'm so hungry, I think I'm dying. Oh, same. You're always hungry. Hey, not all the time. Let me guess. 
You skipped breakfast <laughs> again. Not on purpose. Right? I have overslept by a few seconds today. Like, no. <laughs> Just cup noodle life. You know, no shade, no shade. Um, but cup noodle life. And it's like, oh, yes, this pan seared, delicate serving of sea bass served atop this dressed asparagus and creamed potatoes. That's nothing fancy. I, you know, it, it, you, you see it all the time. It's just, what is fancy? Like, she is. <laughs> She's got weird standards, man. She's got weird standards. Right then. Stop stalling, Isabella. What's this about? Let us say, Rebecca, she wouldn't be inviting us out if it wasn't worth hearing out. Well, we're waiting. I'm treating you guys to a once in a century thing. Drugs, drugs is fancy. An expectant grin breaks out on my I'm face, sorry, except. Say that again. And this is important <laughs> because. <laughs> yep, uh, I am starting my own intervention. Uh, I made all of this money selling drugs. Um, and I need help. <laughs> uh, uh, fair, yeah. Uh, less on the plate, more drizzle. Uh, Becca only raises an eyebrow at me when Zack appears like he didn't get the punchline to another joke Ash made, and is desperately searching for someone to explain it to him. Also, the music. Like, I know I mentioned it last time, but, like, there's, like... The music is really good. Ooh. Um, okay, I feel like I missed something. Let's have the backlog. Uh, treating you guys to a once in a century thing. Okay, so why is it important? Um, yeah, uh, no more instant noodles for us, boys. Okay, let me do that again. Relationship status updated. Oh, hell yeah, Zachary. We are, like, boys with Zachary. Like, Zachary is our boy here. And, like, I'm not super upset about that. Guess what, guys? I'm paying! I sold the house! As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. Fancy sauce! Very fancy. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen. As of today, I'm Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos and free from my instant noodle binge. Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yes, I, me personally. I pocketed Which the house money. Is this? In Aslam Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. Wow. That's... Yum Yum Sauce is very fancy. She lets out a hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who's heard it something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. I mean, it's... She is. Didn't think we'd be able to sell it. Have some faith in me, Becca. I'm not... Am I not your best friend or what? <laughs> you don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I could stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat, and judging me from the, and judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. Me and my stupid mouth. I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? That's what I've you been saying. Yesterday, and now you already have a buyer. It happens from time to time. Yeah, but... Highly Look, sus. I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, you have something. W what if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know, they're a fraud, or they suddenly back out? I didn't think about that at all. Actually, that's actually a good point. Like, what if they're pulling some kind of fraud game? Like, I mean, like, I, I, this is a video game, and I know they're not, right? Because, you know, they're obviously going to be demon victims of the spook house or whatever. But, like, yeah, no, they just show up and be like, yeah, 
Uh, I'm willing to pay 20% over the asking price for this multi-million dollar home. Uh, also, hey, uh, uh, kid who uh, sold us the house, here's a couple thousand dollars in a, a, a nondescript envelope. Uh, don't tell anyone about it. Shh, that's between us. Yeah, that sounds like a fraud game, right? Like, day one of the open house, like, the interior designers in there, the interior designer... You know, she could have just been casing the joint for all we know. Yeah, no, that that adds up. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Ooh. But, like, I'm reasonably sure that's not the case. Because this is a spooky video game, right? But that's that's a Isn't good point. Isn't a little too early to celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. As, as you're talking since like Zach. Me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it, more like. But I'm not going to tell Becca about knowing that. Knowing her, she'd only worry. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... Drugs. Again, in, drugs. It's why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. <laughs> so don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. That was the really worst accent that, ever. You? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious in this day and age, Belle. Oh, well, there's you. A fair point. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. Hell yes! <laughs> I begin to gather the plates to my side. The food in each is still untouched. A laugh almost escapes my mouth as the way Zach's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Oh. Becca's hand interrupts me as I'm just about to pull her plate closer to mine. <laughs> I'm kidding! Don't go all pouty on me again! I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I'm sure he's going to be fine now, though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Or maybe wait until the deal is closed. He's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Actually, Papa's been dead for years, and Mom's just been pocketing the money. Uh, I mean, what? It's strange thinking about talking about this with other people, even those who've known you long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. <laughs> what a clinical way to say lunch went well. Uh, a laugh here, a playful jab there, but most of it is spent catching up and telling stories about whatever is keeping us busy these days. Quit ruining you? What did I even say? <laughs> like, I, like, I know I said something dumb, but like, I literally can't even remember this is going by so fast. <laughs> okay, maybe look at the backlog. Oh, yeah, no, Dad's been dead for years. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Just, ha I had that thought when she was on the phone with her. <laughs> and, like, I just, I was like, okay, no, I need to, need to save that for later. <laughs> uh, something we couldn't afford to do before the day, taking into account what happened. Yep, sure, that was English, probably. Even Becca's surprisingly chatty. Is there something in the sea bass we ate? Like, like Katie's been saying, drugs. Zack, though, appears less energetic. While he's far from being the life of the party, he's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. See, drugs! 
Apart from a few inflits, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices... Are you sure you're not feeling under the weather, Zachary? Huh? No, I I'm okay. No, no worries, Rebecca. <laughs> sound okay yeah, he did. To me. It's, it, it's, it's okay. I might be feeling a little bummed out today, but, but I'm, I'm sure this will pass. Is it about the reviews this morning? Oh no! A pain expression crosses Zach's face, and almost immediately, Becca retreats in her inquiry as though the man's look is enough of an answer for her. Oh no! Was his movie bad? I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? Did I stumble on a big secret? This is why I don't like waking up late at 5 a.m. on a Saturday. Sorry, oh no! I just happened to check on some sites this morning. Oh no, his movie's no, bad. It's, it's, it, it's a very sensitive topic in the first place. Oh no! I should have expected it. What reviews? Becca glances at Zack, her emotions unsure, eyes asking if for his consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. What, Zack? It... What, with Zack, it has always been better to wait. Let him speak on his own. Becca, too, to some extent. Although with her, explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulders, gesturing for her to go on with a tilt of his head. Oh no, they were really bad! It's his movie. <sighs> oh no. Explain anything. Stop dangling the information. Oh, I really and hope it wasn't because we Zachary, went and talked I'm through it. I'm supposed to be telling her about this. It's still your documentary. Is it something bad? Not bad per se. You you guys don't need to dwell on it much. Bad? Listen here. I wouldn't trivialize what those bowheads wrote if I were you. They're ruining other people's jobs. From how her tone rises in anger, it seems like she's the, the one slided, not Zack. A snicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down as soon as she sends me a hard look. This isn't a laughing matter, Isabella. Some bow bag just insulted him. Calm down, Rebecca. Aww. Just reviews, and it Not bad a reviews. Lot. Oh no. I do not care about you two, but calling the entire film and out and out drivel, you're better off watching an educational oh, kids no. TV show, and worst one and a half hour of my life, among other things, isn't exactly a critique any decent movie reviewer would say. Oh no! <laughs> oh, Zach, you poor baby! Oh my god, that's awful! Holy crap! That's not just bad, that's... That's really bad. <laughs> oh my Have you god. Got a critique? Did we even watch the same film? Well, maybe I ain't cut out for it. Better stick with my photography or something. If nothing else, this helped me open my eyes to what I can and can't do. Hey man, You're giving your up. first thing is always going to be bad. It wasn't a question. It was just something experimental I did on my free time anyway. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, you worked on it for months. A wise yellow stretchy dog once said, "The first step, uh, sucking at something, is the first step to being good at something." And that's always stuck with me. <laughs> Doesn't look like it matters to those people. Case in point, this stream. Anyway. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> oh, sorry, Isabella. <laughs> My palm strikes the table, sending the tableware on top of clinking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat. But here I am, chest heaving, looking down at him with the same manner a teacher would at an unruly student. Becca's probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there are some things people like Zack aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. He of all people should know. It's just a review. Except they're pretty well-known critics. Why does that matter? Ouch. They aren't the ones calling the shots on this. Isn't that why they have a committee? Right, Becca? An amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. 
What does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a petty reason. I haven't read what those people wrote about his work, but a few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. Becca pipes up, hey, we should find out where they live and burn their homes down. Like, that's what that look says to me. It's like, hey, we should we should kill their dogs. <laughs> like, that is a face of, hey, let's go do crime. <laughs> I should know. After all, I'm... Failing means you're playing, Zack. Uh, not that I'm saying it's bad. I've seen it from start to finish, and I know for myself what you created isn't something people should scoff at. Aww. I don't know anything about filming or photography. Hell, I don't have an inkling of artistry in me except for those doodles I make for class. But I know what I watched. Look at Isabella. It's not every day you see her all riled up like this. Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as a flush of embarrassment blooms across my face. It was a heat of the moment thing. And anyway, I'll be very angry with you if you quit. What about the exhibit? What exhibit? Classified information. Even if I bring you your favorite tonight? Ooh, my favorite oh, what? <laughs> oh, come on. I thought we aren't supposed to have secrets. Exhibit? I don't remember an exhibit. A burst of laughter comes from Zack. This doesn't go back that far, does it? I'm sure. Yeah, no. What exhibit? I don't remember an exhibit. Uh, I might need some time alone to myself for a while. Just to think about things. How I'll go from here. That sort of stuff. Poor baby. Hey, I'm not quitting, Bella. Don't give me that face. There's no face at all. Only a poor imitation of puppy dog eyes. If you could call this one. I'll be damned if I break any promise I make to you guys. Aww. Besides, you're right. He's if such a big sweetie. Right now, I love him. For another week. And that's all the answer I needed from him. As sentimental as it sounds, there's fulfillment in knowing another person you know won't take the same path you've walked. It's not like it's over for me, though. I still have time. I could still come back. Do my own thing. Do what I really want to do. I want to be an adult film star. <laughs> Surely once Papa recovers, once I'm done with everything. Inside my bag, my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon lull. The screen shows Rose. You should probably hey, answer that. Isabel. You at the office? Funny, Rose. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Don't. I'm kidding. BRC says the floor plan copies are ready for Miss McCullough to pick up. She states that as if, as if it already explains everything. Then, out of the blue, she launches a long rant about how awful the state of Lux were in streets. Are you calling and driving? That's bad. All of which she says in a single breath, I can barely keep up and make out a single word. If I stay quiet, if only to avoid becoming the next object of her fr frustration, she's similar to Becca in that regard. I'm stuck in horrendous traffic right now. Bloody stupid drivers. When she's finally ran out of things to complain about and stops, what she says next still has none of what I'm hoping to hear from her. Just a quick mumbled plea for me to meet for me to meet the rights interior designer anyway, in her stead you. and Bye. Thanks. Classic Rose. She ends the call without even asking for my input. Okay. Um I'm going to need to take a quick intermission here. Um so give me a couple minutes and we will resume.
And we are back. Let me tell you, I was just telling my wife that, um, how I didn't give enough, uh, like, the OG YouTubers, um, enough credit, because, like, I've been doing this for an hour and a half already, and, like, my voice is already, like, I, I did some pretty, pretty intense, like, vocal warm-ups, and, like, I'm still getting, getting down, like, I, I still have plenty of time left. Um, like I might, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to go all the way, but if I have to stop early because my voice is shot like last week, um, uh, well, that's what I'll do. But yeah, no, man, just talking for three hours is a lot harder than you'd really think about it. So we have a new journal injury. Oh, this is the... Um, closing paperwork. Neato. Whoa. We're about to make some kind of decision, aren't we? Oh, boy. So, I I don't know if, uh, if Cassandra's still in the chat. Um, but, um, like, is the... Um, like tier here important like because i know i've been getting a lot of like two decisions like two tier decisions so like is this the first decision this the second one and this the third one or like is this just something else entirely She's not in chat at the moment. Um, either way, uh, we press on. The sky is cloudless in the noon. <laughs> Hang on. The sky is cloudless. Points directly at clouds. And the noontime sun. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Is beating down hard on the concrete when we leave our buffet. Uh, when we leave the cafe. It's far from unbearable, but it's enough to put most people in a fickle mood or make them vulnerable to catching something. Like a frisbee! No wonder we have staff members going AWOL lately, not to mention my boss's mercurial moods. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want our usual cloudy weather back. Anyway... For all the gripes about the unpredictable weather, though, the streets of Luxburn remain constantly busy. The hurried tapping of shoes against the pavement, pavement and inane chatter coming from the lunchtime crowd fills the humid air afternoon. Fuse the heat. Whatever. A small reminder of things we still have to do, regardless of how much I want to return to the comfort of my bed. Same. <laughs> Back to the Briar Realty for me. Zack to a meeting with a magazine publisher featuring luxury houses, and Becca to her lesson plans and books at home. But more than once, I catch her sneaking a longing glance over something displayed in the shop window. Zarbucks. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that. Did she want to buy something? Maybe I can get it for her for Christmas. I turned my head at the last shop she checked out. A fleeting glimpse. The world stills. Oh no. Ah! 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 Dang it. Uh, she looks at me, eyes hollow, gaze piercing, and boring into my- And boring! <laughs> She's not very interesting. <laughs> into my very soul, like a set of chains to keep my whole body still. So did Becca see that? That's why she was looking at it? I mean, we did show him all the chain letter. There are no shadows or whispers this time, only a plea. A hum, low and distinct. 
compelling me, beckoning me, intent on dragging me to the void beyond the glass. Help me. I don't dare move. My heart hammers against my ribs, each beat, every thump, screaming at me to look away and make a run for it. But I can't. I couldn't. All of my limbs feel heavy while my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. Help me. Leave me alone. Uh, absolutely same. Definitely help her if she wasn't so creepy. Her mouth stretched in a grin, wide and unpleasant. The panic building up in my chest forces me to make a tentative step back. I try not to stare at the decaying flesh, the blood streaming from her gaping wounds on her arms or her nailless fingers. I don't want this. Not like this. Not after I got what I want for Papa. No, no, stop. Leave me alone. Ah! Her face contorts. She let out a wail, sharp and un utterly unforgiving. Rage. There is only hatred and bitterness, as if the very notion of turning away from her is an offense in, a, in and of itself. Please! I don't want this! <laughs> Before I know it, I'm stumbling backwards, my own throat hoarse from the screams I didn't even notice were already coming out of my mouth. The back of my feet catches a on a loose stone, sending me sprawling onto the ground. The resulting pain completely jolts me out of the haze, blurring my mind. For a little while, my surroundings appear unfamiliar until Becca's face swims into my vision. Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. Thank God for the mute button on this mic. A look of concern is on her face, and her hands are gripping my arms tight. Oh, absolutely. Like, I would be looking up any old hoodoo I could. I was like, yep, yep. Uh, time to visit the old country and see what secrets uh, Nana holds. <laughs> Even Zack appears to be beside himself with worry when he stands behind her, acting as a shield against a small crowd of onlookers already forming around us. What happened? Bella, you okay? My mouth opens and closes, but nothing comes out. The words refuse to form. On impulse, I sneak a swift glance in the display window. She's gone. Yet, the foreboding feeling hasn't left me. My hands are shaking as I push myself off the ground, my weakened limbs relying solely on reflex and muscle memory. Something icy has made its home at the pit of my stomach. I want to throw up anything to get the wretched sensation out. You are screaming. Zack, call someone. No, don't. I'm good. I'm good. I need... I need to get to the office. Rose, the floor plans. Someone's going to pick it up. I, I'll see you later. Be careful. Don't stand up yet. Stay put, Isabella. Zack, you watch over her for me. I'll call for... Uh, for someone. I attempt to smile to put her at ease, but it likely comes off as a grimace. Gently, I push her hands off my shoulders. My knees are still trembling, but I can't... but I can stand. What's so our journal update to? Ah, the spooky window reflection. Makes sense. My knees are trembling, but I can stand. Leave. Leave me. I thought you wanted help! Stay away. Away! The humidity is stifling. Everyone's stares are unnerving. Becca and Zack's concerns are suffocating. I don't want to be here. 
No more. I break into a run. Yeah, because nothing says I am mentally stable like um like screaming in the middle of the street, collapsing in a heap, telling your friends, "No, I'm okay. I'm okay." And then breaking into a dead sprint down the down the road. That screams mental stability. Also, weirdly enough, it's five it's five o'clock again. Th this this uh this place has a weird sense of time. Weird sense of time. Though still still would die for this ram. <laughs> Paragon of stability. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Here with only occasion the occasional drips of water on the sink and the whirring of the fan blades to keep me company, it's easy to f fall into a cycle of negative thinking. But even with the clutter to keep me company, the room still feels a whole lot bigger than usual. I hug my knees closer as, as a group passes outside. Loud. So loud. If only there was a way to tune everything out to keep my mind, to keep my head from replaying every image and every sound of her. Uh, Katie, I believe um, you can chime in with drugs now, because uh, that would do it. Also, she's saying that there's, like, a group passing outside, but this looks like she's, like, pretty high up there, right? Like, I mean, she might not be on, like, <laughs> so many drugs. She might not be on, like, the highest floor, but, like, she's a couple floors up anyway. Or alcohol, yeah. Drugs one way or another. Her screams, her awkward... Both! M yes! Uh, drugs and alcohol are a good combination. Uh, enough. That's enough. A shiver passes over me, though it's not from the hair still hanging damp against my back, nor the draft that enters the room from the windows I've left wide open. My gaze shifts over the coffee table. Its edges flutter innocuous, innocuously as the wind touches it. Funny how an ordinary-looking piece of paper has, can bring so much trouble. Now, we talked about this last time, but we we showed the letter uh, to a lot of people. Uh, it was Be Brave and Look Up. Save for the movie... Um, well, I can't find it now. It was like we, we showed, um, we showed, um, the, the, the two people and the interior designer, the letter, and then we showed all three of our friends, the letter. So, like, we've broken the curse. Uh, Dobby is free, as if I can make that joke again. I feel like I can. But, like, so why are we still seeing her? We've sent this to five people or else. You know? We've, in fact, sent it to six people. Like, I thought that was how chain letters work. Impulse to throw it away or rip it into pieces is still there. I I guess you can say that we showed it to them, but like, there's only one letter. How are you supposed to like mail it to five people at one time? I mean, like, I guess you could fax it to people, uh, but that would be inconvenient to say the least. You could scan it and email it to people. What about those people who've already seen it? Will they? Yeah. How are the people you show it to supposed to send it to five other people? 
are they all supposed to fax it? Uh, knowing that she's real and might also go after people I care about. I just wish someone would listen. Believe me! Ah! That was... That was really jarring. <laughs> oh, that one seemed louder than the other ones. That was really jarring. The break in the silence here that makes me jump out of my skin. Yeah, fucking same. <laughs> Blindly, I fish up my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions, where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Zach's name flashes brightly on the screen. Is he calling because of this afternoon? Frankly, it's the last thing I want to discuss, but... I did leave the two of them there without saying anything. Girl, this, this has gone to voicemail already. Knowing Zach, I bet he's worried. Hey, Zach. Oh, good. I thought for sure you're not going to pick up. Sorry, it took me a while to find my phone. No worries. You game tomorrow? I pause. I don't recall making plans with Zach for the weekend. Did I forget something? Remember that guy I told you about? Uh, back in the oh, yeah. The uh, priest for the blessing? Does it really yeah. Now? All right. I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through the trouble, especially after what happened with his film. Sometimes I forget how kind Zack can be. Yeah, I remember. Is he... is he fine with it? Uh, my friend doesn't mind. We're lucky he's not busy. So, tomorrow, he'll meet us at the mansion. Okay. Sorry for the trouble, Zack. Hey, no problem. I'm the one who suggested it to begin with, and, well, this afternoon you did surprise us. Never seen you scream like that. You scared the hell out of Rebecca. <laughs> I guess I owe you a lot for this, huh? <laughs> nah, we're cool, we're cool. You had us worried, but I know you'll tell us about it eventually. I just want to make sure you're doing well. You left all of a sudden, and you're not answering any of our calls. He's trying to get me to talk. Normally I'd tell him I'm fine, say a few simple reassurances to put their minds at ease. Now, now nothing will form. I can't bring myself to say anything. He seems to have sensed my hesitation because he immediately changes the subject. Yeah, anyway, I gotta go. I left something on the stove before making this call. Just soup. But it'd be embarrassing if I burn soup. It would be embarrassing. It. Ashton, on the other hand. Oh, remind, remind me to tell you about what he did with the pressure cooker next time. <laughs> yeah, oh, he... Damn, it overflowed. Oh, no! <laughs> really need to get going. Bye, Bella. <laughs> I thought he was using it as an excuse, but no, he actually had soup. Uh, the muffled echoes through the receiver. No one is saying if this will this will work. Even I'm doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get us out of this nightmare. Sleep comes easier tonight. And for the first time in a long time, I dream. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that's that is that Luke? That. Not, not you. No? Like. Like, how long is this game, right? Because, like, you apparently get to play as all of these characters. Like, every character that you see here, you eventually get to play as. And so, like, are we going to play through the entire game as Isabella and then come back through as Rebecca and Ash and Luke or Zach and Hannah and Marianne? Like, that'd be neat if so, like, see the game from everyone else's perspective. But for the first time in a long time, I dream. 
I dream a dream of, of clear skies, of unrestrained laughter from children playing in the street, and of small, cramped dwellings. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. However, this is home to me. Aww. October 23rd. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Monster Truck Rally on Sunday. Although the air feels muggy and I miss the chilly autumn weather, it's one of those rare weekends when I'm up even before my alarm rings at 5 a.m. again. If it wasn't for Zach's call last night, I'd probably sleep in. When 9 a.m. rolls around, I'm already on my way to the Ermagerd Mansion. To think I'd have to go back again, I'd be lying if I... You know, I'd be lying if I said I was excited. I don't have to anymore. Rose happily gave me the paperwork duty when I volunteered. We're on the last phase of the sale, too. Well, almost. Papers to sign, documents to finalize, various other legalities to settle with the current owner, and all that. Still. Never mind that the new owners have want everything done within the week, when the process typically takes a lot longer than that. Does this, does this place only have one street? <laughs> they want it done, we'll get it done. I really, really don't understand rich people. But money can do wonders. I won't be surprised if they'll be able to push the process just a little more, like what they did to secure the house. The point is, I'm under no obligation to return to the house anymore. And that's probably for the best, girl. Running is an option, of course. I can now move on to another property and forget everything. However, at the end of the day, I'm always... It's always my conscience that wins. What if something happens to those who have seen the letter? Ash, Zach, Becca, Miss McCullough, the rights. See six people. The guilt will follow me to my grave. The mansion looms as we approach. Whispers welcoming me back. Shadows calling. I hope this is the last time. They're engaged in a quiet conversation when I find them in the mansion's front gardens. Let's see, did that trigger the tree? Oh, I wanted this one with all the different stuff. But I have to go... Like, yeah, you really do just kind of have to, like, get your thing done. And then go back through with the auto-skip on. I guess that's how this game is probably meant to be played. Yeah, what the hell? Okay, well, we have a branching path up here. That's fine. We have decisions to make. But even with familiar company, it's impossible to feel at ease here. I, I don't know why, but I hate his mustache. It's just, it's not there enough to really be a mustache, but just there enough you have to address it. No matter who I'm with, the feeling of being watched is there. Like, the very place itself is something about trespassers. Zack, on the other hand doesn't seem to notice. Or he simply doesn't care. Or he's already used to it. I could never tell with him. Sometimes. Sometimes he's almost hard to read as, a as hard to read as Ash. Almost. At least Zach doesn't ask for as much patience as dealing with Ash does. Wow, that was English. At least Zack doesn't ask for as much patience as dealing with Ash does. And that says plenty about him. That, that's, that's incorrect. That, what does that mean? At least Zack doesn't, I don't, I don't even know, man. Ash is a dill hole, is what it says. <laughs> TLDR. <laughs> Miracle of miracles, how the two have ended up being best friends. He waves at me as I approach. True to his promise, Zack is right as friend with him. Father Norman. 
Somehow, I expected him to look older. Oh, don't be surprised. They say people who have found their calling are getting younger these days. S sorry Father. I didn't mean to say that out loud. No offense taken. Though, I admit I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think someone would ask this house to be blessed after all these years. You've heard of it, Father? In passing. The occasional rumors and talk by the locals, nothing new. You don't spend years serving the church here without hearing a random hearsay here and there. You never mention what you thought of those, Father. Ah, but he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him any more. But what I saw... May not be what you think. It depends entirely on what you mean by it. If you're talking about spirit beings, angels, demons, then... Yes. Are we talking about the spirits of people who have departed? The word makes it clear that once the deceased has left us, they are gone. Nerd. Was, of course, I didn't come here to bore you with a lecture. Thank God. It was enlightening. Amen. Oh, thank you. Just remember that a God who loves his children would never let them linger once the time comes. That's what my papa often tells me. Your father must be a good man. He raised you well, no doubt. Well then, shall we? Regardless of what it is, I'm sure the mansion's new owners would appreciate such sincere intentions. From a stranger, no less. He lets Zack and I walk ahead. A relief. This way he won't see how tightly I'm clutching the straps of my bag. <laughs> right? <laughs> Father Norman uh, was probably trying to put me at ease. But the worry, the cold, restless, foreboding feeling has firmly lodged itself in my stomach, making its presence known with every step we take toward the house. Hey, you okay? Hell no! <laughs> right? This place obviously uh, gives us the the, the heebie, comma, jeebies. It's hard to lie when Zack gives you that look. It's just there. That kind that impl- Oh, wait, no. Aww, yeah. oh, we are apparently Zack stands. Let's go. The kind that implores a silent appeal. I'm not sure he's even doing it consciously. Another breeze blows by. I try not to shiver. Try not to listen to the voices that may or may not be there. Ugh, this place really gives me the creeps. It doesn't seem more than an ordinary house to me, though. Damn, I should have brought my camera with me. I saw a few areas that'd be good for a shoot. You think the new owners will allow it? Shh, what if you catch something? Or someone in one of the pictures? <laughs> it just means they want to be seen, doesn't it? Fair, I guess. For it. It's not like we can stop them if they do. You're really Man, Zach. Zach is like the all right, coolest. All right, sorry. Don't worry. I don't think whatever's inside this house will do anything. I'm here, yeah? I'll take care of them. Or I think I can. You're not that scary. Punching but ghosts. I'll be sure to run behind you if I see one. Ridiculous talk, though temporary, reprieve. It lends is though the temporary Yep. He offers me a smile in return, at le the least he could do. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like, yeah, no, even if the ghosts were here, they couldn't. we couldn't do anything about it. Like, yeah. Smart last words to pick. The slight motion of his head, he gestures us... Damn it. With the slight motion of his head, he gestures us to move ahead. Uh, while my own fear is left forgotten at the time being, the things inside my bag clatter softly against each other while I rummage for the keys to the mansion. I should have heard the telltale jingle by now. Uh, but didn't I put it in my bag last night? Seconds later, I'm sitting on my heels, and one after another, taking out everything from my pocket. Every slip. It'll be a pain to put everything back in later, but I'm sure it's just under these... Nothing. Oh, oh man, of all the times to forget. The oh jeez, oh heck. No, I, I... I'm sorry, Father. I think I left the key. 
No use coming up with excuses, and right after they've looked, taken the time to go this far away from the city. With a heavy sigh, I grab the door handle and pull myself up, a string of apologies ready at the tip of my tongue. Careful, Bella! We have spoken with the current owners. Well, technically, you're not yet the owners, but... Sounds like Rose. There's a brief moment of confusion. And then, I'm falling. The momentum of the door swinging open pulls me back first into the mansion's foyer, before I can make sense of what's happening. The second time in three days that you've busted your head on this foyer. Oh, my back. What the... It was, Rose. No time to nurse my bruised back or make up excuses, because the next thing I know is X pulling, gently pulling me upright by the arm. Rose looks down at me with a mixture of apprehension and something I couldn't quite place. I'd say it's relief, but... Ah, heck. Good going, Isabella. Right after you volunteered to work on the papers. And standing behind her. Goodness, I'm really sorry. Mr. Wright! Oh, Isabel! We always meet in the most... interesting circumstances. A complete understatement, darling. What are Absolutely. You doing in my house? Hell of a bruise. Abruptly, he waves his hand at Zack and Father Norman like their presence is a slight against his own. I thought you said you wanted to do paperwork duty. What are you doing here? Like a deer caught in the headlights. Unfair, Rose. That's putting me on the spot. And it leaves me no other choice but to answer. I, uh, the reason why I'm here? Well, spit it out, Lily. We don't have all day. I'm just absolutely. Make sure everything is fine before absolutely. You move in. They're absolute serial killers. That is the face of a serial killer. I'm so sorry, Mama. You said I'd go to hell if I lie. I likely will after this, but there's no other way. Well, that isn't entirely a lie. I am here to make sure no one disturbs them after they move in. It just so happens that what I'm checking for and trying to drive away is one of is of the paranormal variety. Oh, the house appears impeccably fine to me. Mr. Wright shifts his eyes around in a cheerful manner, as if he's looking for faults in every crevice of the house. The grin on his face, though, he returns his his attention to me, is similar to what my uh, Jordan had often given me when he was up to something. I guess it's like Tag Tagalog for cousin or something, or maybe uncle. I usually, uh, usually a scare prank that inevitably something. I never did forget the way my brother sneered at me then. I guess it means brother. Um. A part of me thinks that perhaps if I hadn't been the object of the mis of the, his mischief in childhood, I would have grown a little braver. <laughs> Come on, little Lily. Lying doesn't do that. Absolutely. Face, this house is some H H Holmes I'm a bulls very bullshit. Man. Now, why are you really here? Right now, in the face of almost an almost identical expression, perhaps even crueler than what I'm used to, the lie I told falls apart. The truth, the truth is, I was just thinking we could have the house blessed b before move-in day. And why would we ever need to have this house blessed? F for luck and protection. Sir, I believe there is a demon in your attic. <laughs> I shrink under his scrutinizing gaze. For a second, I think for a second I think he'll start shouting at me. <laughs> Instead he laughs. Not the mocking jeering kind, but one wondering if he's hearing things right. I'd say he was amused, but I honestly couldn't understand what was so funny with what I just said. Demons er were. Was it really that weird? Wasn't it a custom here? I wish Becca was here to explain stuff like this. That's rich coming from you. When we saw Devlin caught, you didn't. It's a small custom back home. I thought it would be nice to do something that would bring positive energy to the mansion since this place has been empty for years. And the papers, Isabella? I hope you did those first before this. Of course I did. It's almost done, in fact. But there are some items I still have to double check before finalizing everything. 
You know I don't sign without a thorough inspection. And well, this is what this is for too. I just thought it would be more efficient to do both at the same time. Here I thought you didn't want to go back. A job is a job, Rose. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. Hell yeah, oh. girl. Well, if that's the case, then go ahead. No need to be so hard on her, Rosie. I personally think it's a nice touch. I was actually thinking of the same thing, but you beat me to it. Darling, Buttercup, please. You know these things don't work. No offense meant to the holy man, of course. That does not explain the nigger, though. Whoa! 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 Okay. Um. Okay, game. Uh. Wow. <laughs> Hard R, too. Uh. Wow. Jeez. Didn't expect that. All right. Crackers. <laughs> Um, gonna have to put a, a warning on that in the, when I upload the VOD. Hell. Oh, yeah, there's an awkward silence, all right. Wow. Although a desire to do so is evident in the way her eyes nervously shifts to, to Mr. Wright. Meanwhile, Zach's grip on my arm suddenly tightens. He doesn't say anything further, but there's a conflicted look at, on him when I uh, glance up. Yeah, how do you recover from that? Like, jeez. That's the face he makes only when he desperately wants to give someone a piece of his mind, but chooses not to do so. Mostly to avoid confrontation or fanning the flames. He's always, always been like this, even among his own friends. He chooses to take a placating stance despite holding opinions of his own. Not that I won't say anything. I know Mr. Wright's a client, but... He's also a massive dillweed. You can't just say that in front of other people. In front of Zack, no less. No, Zack is a sweet baby angel. If Ashen were here, I know he wouldn't stand for it. Yeah, fuck him up! Jesus. And neither do I. There was reason why bullies back home never touched my younger brother again after I gave him a taste of their own medicine. You might be inches taller than me, but I'm pretty sure I can still land a hit or two. Yes! Kick his ass! Maybe if I, if only I'm not going to get in trouble with BRC for it. Aww. Before any punch could be thrown, Ma'am Hannah cuts in. Punch him straight in the dick. <laughs> Wait. Is his first name Lucille? <laughs> His first name is Lucille. Ah, <laughs> uh, in a voice too firm, demanding his complete silence. Lucille. What? Lucille bruised balls. <laughs> Instead of answering, she merely crosses her arm and shoots her husband a sharp, disapproving glare. All, yeah, all three. That seems to have done the trick. Yeah, he is in trouble. He immediately shuts his mouth, before, not before muttering a few inaudible words under his breath. Uh, at this, Mamma Hannah can only sigh and shake her head. Oh, give it a rest, love. Do you have a better idea? Who knows? Positive energy might even give us what we've been waiting for. Or some peace. Let them do their job. What have we been waiting for? I don't think I was ever informed of. Uh, it seems to be less H.H. H. Holmes at this point and more, uh, more Manson. Um, <laughs> but you know. Uh, yeah, no, really don't help when your first name's Lucille. The, the earrings. Nothing you yeah. should worry about right now. Anyway, we've still got a few things we need to discuss with Rosie here. Over lunch. I hope you don't mind, Isabel. We'd love to take you with us, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, ma'am. This will take time. H.H. <gasps> H. H. Mansion? Oh! 
<laughs> Rose looks like she's about to murder someone. Probably me. At least she won't have to stay in a haunted property. She's getting the better end of this deal, if anyone's going to ask me. Oh, wonderful. I hope the next time the three of us meet, it'll be over a closed deal. Hmm? Of course, ma'am. Please look forward to it. Rose hurriedly hands me the keys to the house before leaving, mouthing reminders to secure the place and harmless threats for throwing her under the bus. I return it with a reassuring smile of my own, even if she's the one who forgets. Sheesh. And just like that? Gone, just as quickly as they appeared, fleeting from one scene to the next, leaving me wondering if this is simply what's typical for the rich and famous. If so, I'd rather stay with my rundown apartment in our little shack back home. There's still joy in the smallest of things, after all. They kind of do, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that those are the ones that were in the beginning of the game. Um, um, like, I'm reasonably sure, but it does look like them, right? With a house this big, it's not surprising when the ceremony takes a few hours to finish. The sun is already high by the time we've gone through the last room. It is creepy. I can never say that I'm a devout follower of my own faith, even when Mama and even with Mama and Papa's teachings. But hearing every word from Father, every word Father Norman uttered as we went around the house has put me at ease. All of a sudden, the mansion doesn't seem so scary anymore. Maybe there's an end to this, or perhaps this is the end. I doubt it, sweetheart. There's a couple more big story blocks. Hopefully we can make it to the end of her story before the stream's over. Or perhaps this is the end. Father Norman bids us goodbye upon exiting the mansion grounds. He has business in the village nearby, he says. A, a minute gesture to... Uh, a minute gesture to reach out to the members of their parish every once in a while. It reminds me of a distant memory, of helping hands and a few kind smiles that helped my family pull through when times were tough. But before he leaves... Isabella, a word before I go? Zachary hasn't been really forthcoming with your situation, and it is something I understand it wasn't his to share. But whatever burdens you, know that it's not a permanent fixture in your life. Besides, you have people to bear it with. I bite back the harsh retorts before they come out, masking it with a smile as, as we wave the good priest off. Like, at least he was well-intentioning, right? Like, even if it came off as kind of a dick move, um, he meant well. His words, though, they meant comfort something. And if they don't believe you, what am I to do? A hand lays briefly on my shoulders, talk, taking me out of my thoughts before they take a sullen turn. But my smile doesn't quite reach my ears when I turn to him. Say, do you want to go somewhere? Hell yeah, Zach. Right now? Where to? Anywhere in the city. I'll leave it up to you. Oh god. Um. Oh, we gotta hang out with Zach, right? Like we gotta. We gotta hang out with Zach. It's our boy. It wouldn't hurt. I've got some stuff I need to buy. Relationship Groceries. status updated. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, his name is Zach Steele. Like, what a badass name, right? And there's a shop I want to check. Hell yeah! Is it real food this time? Let me guess, Rebecca. Nice. She's just worried about you. Even I can't eat that much instant noodles. Think of it as a talent. Let's just go, Zach. Hell yeah, grocery shopping with your boy! A smile, a real one this time, devoid of any unpleasant thoughts. Regardless of what happened between us the past few days, I don't think I want to think harshly of, of them. 
Oh, this is cute. This park is so cute. Once again, man, just the art direction is just so nice. So nice. Also, she's the protagonist of an anime. You can't tell me otherwise. Did we get any journal entry? I guess not. Uh, Zach had me wait on a bench upon arriving prior to going off somewhere. He hasn't returned since, since, and it's been a good 20 minutes of being left alone entirely to my thoughts. Did he just ditch her? <laughs> That'd be rude. In this weather, the city park gives off a lazier, more languid vibe than usual. Like, she looks like Madoka Magica the small child where children are usually seen running around and playing now there are people lying leaning back in picnic benches simply enjoying the afternoon sun the smell of food drifts for in from nearby carts and if the wind blows in the right direction one could catch the whiff of freshly trimmed grass i'd gladly sleep on this bench if i if i weren't waiting for someone Soon enough, I see his hulking figure running towards me, carrying a medium-sized box on one hand and casually waving at the, uh, the other at me. He's panting when he reaches my bench. Sweat drips profusely from his forehead, but there's a grin on his face. <laughs> Sorry, the line was really long. Really long. Uh, you didn't have to run. Sit down first. Nah, uh, I'm, I'm good. Didn't want to make you wait for these. I already know what's in the blue box before he opens it. Ah, Precious! Aww, cinnamon rolls! Oh my god! Alright, well, I'm glad you at least got to see this. This is cute. This is cute as hell. Alright, Katie, it's been great having you. I'm probably going to end here before too long. Um, this might just... This, this, there's... Even though it's mostly fully voice acted, like, there's just still so much talking, and I, I'm just not used to... Not, not used to it. Like, you'd think as a forever DM, I'd be more used to talking for hours on end, but... Weirdly enough, no, I'm not. Um, but yeah, um, so you won't have a whole lot to, to catch up on. Um, I'll probably just play out the date scene and then probably call it. Um, but yeah, no, Zach is best boy, and this is just so sweet. Like, I, like if I didn't already love Zach, I love him now. <laughs> How cute. The very same one I bought after I sold my first property. Aww, it's even sweeter. After I met Zach, Ash, and Becca. Funny how such a small thing could trigger a distant memory, no matter how mundane it is. I don't say no to free food, but why is he getting me these now? What for? He is. He leans on the empty space beside me, wiping his sweat off his Technology. forehead. And his thanks for yesterday and the other day. You don't uh -huh. have to buy me anything, Zach. You were upset. You haven't been yourself recently, and yeah, no, it'll go great in this game. Are you just saying that, or? No, really. Rebecca told me. You know how she is. Ashton too. Ashton was an ass. He should have been named Ashhole instead. Got him. He went a little overboard, yeah. And I can talk to him if you want. He'll still tease me about it, even if it's Rebecca telling him to stop. Besides, I can handle him. You always do. And yesterday, when you talked me through my little slump... Aww. I want our old Isabella back. Are you... Are you still upset? Aww, you sweet baby. The journal entry look like.
There are times when I wish Zack had been my big brother, or Becca, my older sister. Ouch. <laughs> Maybe life would have been a little bit easier then. Maybe Papa wouldn't be as sick as he is. Maybe. Maybe I wouldn't be alone here. What? <laughs> Bitch! Uh, but then again, if he is, if they are what I wish them to be, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have met Ash, too. Life back home is tough, but for all that, I... I wouldn't change at all for one selfish wish. In this city of 68,000 people, I have people I could depend on. Three of them, in fact. That ratio is pretty okay. <laughs> when, I, when you think about it, when you compare the number of the odds finding someone like them amidst the sea of nameless people, why, it's about 20,000 to one. <laughs> I'm lucky. Thanks a lot for today, Zach. You didn't have to, but you did. I can always count on you. Just me? No Ashton or Rebecca? Oh boy, they won't be happy to hear that. I don't mind being the favorite, though. Hell no, yeah. No favorites, but you cook better than both of them, so that's a plus. <laughs> it's always been fool with you, ain't it? Don't put it like that. You're making me sound like a glutton. I'm not saying you are, but it does feel good to know there's someone I could invite for food to be able to eat all of it. Only that? I thought we were also art buddies. Oh, that too. Uh, but the food thing really stands out when you think about it. You do eat a lot for someone your, uh, size. Low blow. I take pride in my height. So, uh, is it okay now? Do you feel better? Aww. Does Zachary, you okay? sweet baby oh, angel. No. I'll be okay. I'll, I'll figure it out somehow it's not as bad as the other day and father norman helped too i should have brought something to thank him oh we could visit him anytime he loves hearing from the young ones hello fellow Isn't kids old, is he don't know he doesn't tell i think i might have seen his face somewhere before and i just couldn't recall when or where ash says he looks like his boss so the bartender at the local pub if he squints don't take his word for it, of course. He might have accidentally right? inhaled something from the forensic lab again when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. This time the laughter comes from both of us. It's genuine. Back to the usual. Things may have not been the easiest lately, but it certainly isn't the worst that's the, the worst that's happened. We do end up sharing the cinnamon buns between us, despite Zack's insistence that it was only for me. But the, but more than the food, there's a relief in contentment. If you need anything, just ring, okay? Like when Ash annoys you too much, I'll help you with him, best friend and not. Hell yeah! No way, I can take him on. Still, an extra muscle wouldn't hurt, yeah? Just let me know, and I'll back you up. My sister knows this one thing to shut him up when he's being his usual self. Ask me what it is whenever you want, and I'll spill it. Ah, oh, hell yeah. I don't think that's necessary, but thanks. I'll keep that in mind. He leaves me with a smile and a wave. Off to some new gig again. As for me... We still need to talk. Becca, Ash, and I... But pretty, put petty arguments aside like adults we all are. This, however, is a start, no matter how small it may be. I just hope... I just hope I can keep them safe. A light wind blows again, sending dried leaves swirling and the distinct smell of earth into the air. For the first time, the sunlight feels less harsh. Maybe a walk is good. I need to visit the grocery, too. Come to think of it, wasn't there an art store that opened recently near the park? Oop. Dot, dot, dot. 
The cat's name is Birthwheel? Wait a minute, what's going on? I figured that was going to be the end of the day. Or at least that's what his collar says. It's an odd name to give a cat, in my opinion. It speaks of grace, much like the one it carries. It shows it in the way he swishes his tail and his eyes fall on my hands every movement. I'm not sure what he finds fascinating about me, to be honest. I wasn't the pict very picture of Grace when he found me, after all. That was a bad idea, carrying two heavy bags of newly bought art materials and groceries without help or a sure ride home. In hindsight, perhaps, I should have bought all of these at the same time. I shouldn't have bought all of these at the same time. I didn't even make it past the park. And now I'm suffering underneath a glaring afternoon sun, hunched upon a park bench, and drenched in sweat, in the company of a cat curiously watching my every movement. I hope it stays where it is. It's just a black cat, but back home they're considered ill omens. They're pretty much considered ill omens everywhere. D don't look at me like that. I can act graceful as well if I want to. Not that I've ever acted graceful in my life, of course. Growing up with rowdy younger brothers and a sister does that. Or maybe it's the opposite. Mama used to call me a little trouble troublemaker before. Well, graceful or not, there's no use moping. A short breather and then I'm off home. Besides, it isn't like the company's bad, even if it is a cat. As long as it doesn't bite or cross my path. Where's your owner, anyway? He has one, doesn't he? An owner? That's what the collar's for, isn't it? A, I thought it said a bondage. A bandage is wrapped on one of its paws, though. I wonder what happened to it. Oh, poor cutie baby. Did he run away? Well, if you don't have one, I won't be able to take you in. My apartment doesn't allow pets. I tried to bring one home before. A cat. Not black, of course. Uh, and Rebecca threw a fit before the landlady could. I take a small packet of sweets from one of the bags inside me. Beside me! And pop it open. It's a little bit different. Oh. As I'm about to, about to put one in my mouth, he meows. My hand stops. D do you want one? Candy? Cats can't have candy. He doesn't meow again as I'm expecting him to, but if I take his unblinking gaze as a yes. I shift a piece to my palm and hold it out to him warily. He sniffs it at once, twice, before... Barufia! Oh, hey! Okay. So... No, 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 no. Um... Eh, heck it. I, I can keep going a little bit longer. Recognition comes as soon as my head snaps in the direction of the voice. Miss McCullough's hard to miss, wet with her height. Love the cat. The cat's very I'm good. Sorry, did my cat hurt you? Like, does everyone just kind of have that? Like, because I I know is Bell Isabella Isabella has it a little bit. But, like, does everyone just kind of have that, like, orange, like, like I said with, um, like I said earlier, because, like, I noticed it with Becca as well, have that sage mode eyeliner going on? Like, but only the women, though. Miss Santos, was it? I'm surprised to see you here. Nice to meet you again, Miss Makala. Were you harmed in any way? I'm sorry. Brufiel's not exactly fond of other people. Even run away from the veterinarian right now. Oh no, he was just sniffing my hand earlier. My brew feels a she. She? All this time, I thought. Pause in the conversation, if this can be called one, is uncomfortable. We're merely two people working different jobs for the same client. Frankly, meetings like this don't happen a lot, and if it does, a simple nodding of heads is enough. We, is that even a question? Gotta talk about our cat. 
Oh, she didn't like that. Aw, that's fine. I don't care. I keep my tone cordial and warm. I'm actually surprised you have a cat, Miss McCalla. And why exactly is that? There are a lot of people who have pets. Yeah, but not a black one. I'm amazed you're taking care of one. I don't understand what you're trying to get at. Is there a problem with my cat? Oh, I no, love your cat. not at all. She's very sweet. Just in other cultures, aren't they a sign of bad luck? Back at home it is. Uh, my grandmother used to tell me stories about it, and... Nothing has happened to me so far. Displeasure is evident on her face. Ah, of course. I've forgotten that for other people, black, car black cats are an omen of good luck. I've heard that one before. There you go again, running your mouth off, Isabella. I rack my brain for a way to remedy the situation, but she holds out a hand. This is a good place to stop and end this conversation, don't you think so? Wow, rude. It is. Good to see you again, Santos. A complete dismissal, if ever I've heard one. I watch her as she leaves, though she only stops shortly before crossing the threshold, separating the park and the street. She faces me again, looking like there's something she's forgotten to say. By the way, about the Irmingard Mansion, with my clients, it's the rights, I mean. I hope you don't mind me asking, but has the deal been finalized? There's still a few papers they need, but the house is more or less theirs now. Ah, uh, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Wait, I... about the mansion. The, uh... The letter. The same one they saw. Whoever she is, she's asking for help. Someone. I want to tell Miss McCullough that the urban legends aren't just legends anymore. <coughs> No, they're urban legends. They are real. Really urban legends. She's not going to believe me. D don't mind me. I, I need to go, too. Have a good day, Miss McCullough. I hasten to pick up all the bags I've left on the bench and ran as far as my legs can take me. In that moment, what I'm carrying in my hands weighs far lighter than the overwhelming guilt trying to consume me. Home. I want to go home. Anywhere I won't be reminded of the house. Of her. Of my own cowardice. Okay. You can actually hear the TV now. Alright, um... Oh, the kitty. Okay, so uh, that's where I'm going to end tonight. Um, feels like a good place to stop. Um, uh, my voice is still getting uh, a bit shot. Still not used to all this talking. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to go back to the main menu. Uh, I need to save. Okay, that... Uh, yes. Sorry, that chattering was really annoying. Um, so, uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, if you liked it, there'll be probably more on Sunday. Uh, it, start, it seems like it's starting to pick up. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, um, that was this episode of The Letter. Uh, I'll hope, I hope you, uh, join me again next week, uh, or Wednesday for the, uh, for more Oxygen Not Included. <laughs>